Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A few days ago I started making a review of this phone mount that I bought from my motorbike. But um, there was something off about the mount itself, so uh, I stopped. I still kept the footage, but uh, I decided to start from scratch. Now that I've spent a few days checking out the features of this mount, I'm ready to give you my first impressions. But first of all, let's, uh, let's see what are we talking about here. So this phone mount is designed to be fitted on the motorcycle handlebar or any round tubing, but uh, with this accessory that I bought with itself, I can still fit it in my already existing ram mount. You can see it's provided with a one inch ball and a ram mount set. So I'm keeping this aside for the moment. And in addition, there is this so-called vibration dampener that I, I guess it should help with uh, all the bumps on the road. Well, let's put that aside for, for the moment. It claims it will fit any phone with a one-handed operation. And uh, it has a few features that uh, are not found in other phone mount chargers with charging capabilities on the market. For instance, I don't like the idea of not having a switch because uh, other similar uh, products on the market don't necessarily have a switch and uh, I might want to turn it off if I wanted to. Plus, yes, of course I bought it mostly because of its uh, 15 watts output wireless uh, capabilities for the phone, but occasionally if I'm not traveling with this phone, that is a rugged phone that I had dedicated specifically for motorcycle navigation, but I'm just going around with my regular phone and it doesn't have wireless charging capability on, I can still use the port, the USB-A port on the bottom with a regular USB-A to Type-C cable to charge my phone if I don't have this specific phone around me. But let's see what there is inside the actual box. So we have mounting hardware for the phone mount to be fitted around the handlebar or any tubing really with different uh, width, width. This is the extension to fit it uh, on, a, on a rear view mirror, not gonna need that. The phone mount itself, then what else? Tiny leaflet, couple of plastic zip ties, spare fuse, which is gonna come handy if I ever need to replace the fuse, because we do have a convenient inside uh, inline fuse on the positive pin and there's nothing else, so not really any rocket science here. But uh, let, let's see what this phone is actually, what this phone mount is actually about. So, so plastic, not super rugged plastic, I have to say. This is also a cheap mount on the cheaper side, uh, about 40, 40 euro. Um, but there are still brackets on the four corners with plastic corners. Um, they appear to be working well for the moment. Only time will tell how they will behave on the long run. Um, this is the deal, this is how it works. You, with a single handed operation, you just press these pins on the sides, you just slap your phone and it automatically clamps it. And quite securely, I have to say, it doesn't bulge, it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere, to be honest. This is how it works. There is this plastic pin in the center, which gets, which triggers the mechanism. So this appears to be working just fine. On the back, we have, of course, the uh, mounting mechanism, which is gonna host the, its proprietary ball as a joint. And with this switch on the back, we can uh, leverage the USB type A port on the bottom if I ever need to use the corded option by putting on USB right here um, and there is a blue LED on the side which conveniently uh, which is going to conveniently be on anytime uh, I hit any of these two position on the bottom or, or up top of course there's the off position and the LED is going to stay off and the Qi or QI you just call whatever you want and um, this is will deliver the wireless charging capabilities to the front of the mount and as advertised, at least it's written down here, a 15 watts charging capability by just dropping the phone here. 
This product is advertised as being uh, water resistant, so this is one of the main reasons for which I chose this because uh, I have this ruggedized, already waterproof phone and I wanted a mount to match it. Uh, the only caveat that I had found so far, at least with this specific phone, this is a Blackview BV1900E, where I put it on the mount and it gets hugged by the four corner clamp. Uh, I am having a hard time by um, having the wireless charging start. What I mean by this is that the coil, the sensor of the coil on the back of the phone or in the front of the, of the Q mount, don't necessarily get aligned properly and uh, by putting the phone in the center the wireless charging does not start uh, but if i put the effort i had to play around with it for a, for a little while to put the push the phone on the bottom and on the left and then try to push it down in order to activate the clamping mechanism most of the time not all the time but most of the time i can um, have the phone charging uh, I also tried this one with a, an iPhone 12 and um, with a Google Pixel 5, I think. And uh, with the Google Pixel, it worked just fine. With the iPhone 12, it was a bit of a hit and miss. But uh, I guess that if I had a slightly longer phone in this direction, uh, this would not be an issue. Meaning that probably I can fix it if I find some kind of spacer to put in these two corners in creating the uh, the condition for which the clamping would stop before and uh, providing a perfect alignment for the coil to start the charging part. But uh, I would say enough with the talking now, let's go to the garage and see how this bad boy will perform. Hey, I'm in the garage right now. You should be able to see that from my previous sat nav equipment, I already have fitted on my bike a ram mount with one inch ball joint so although this specific component is provided with the with the packaging of the q mount of the q mount i'm not gonna need it at this time so if you only have the one inch ball from anywhere on your bike you can already go with the q mount because this component is gonna be provided in the packaging itself and this of course is where the provided adapter is gonna go in order to then continue its trip towards the back of the mount itself. And in the meantime, I use the very tiny provided Allen screw, Allen key, in order to replace the existing mount with the um, vibration dampener. So that is fitted already. It was like a 30 seconds operation. And this is where the ball is gonna go. And I want to, I want this little guy to be sitting in, I don't know, this position or this position. I'm not sure. Maybe this position because I will be having the corded USB port right on this side where the USB port already is. And also the switch is gonna sit right on top of here. Well, I will be seeing the LED light on top, so I'm gonna have a visual confirmation from up top. And also, by operating with the glove with my left hand, is usually like the best option to operate. So I think that probably it's gonna stay like this. But now let's go test the charging capability. As you can see from my, this very simple um, demo setup, I had arranged for this SE auxiliary part directly from the battery and uh, the Q mount is uh, wired to this component. And uh, as you can already see, the power is confirmed by the LED turning blue because of the switch is on Qi option. While now, as you can see, it's off. I'm gonna put it back on. Now, the problem is that when I put the phone on the mount, I should be expecting for it to turn on immediately. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen because the coil of the wireless charging are slightly off-centered and do not align perfectly. So the only way, as you can see, now the red LED is on and it's charging. So now if I push it down, I think you heard the mechanism latching. And if I release it gently, yeah, now I'm not holding that. I'm not holding the phone, I'm just holding the mount. 
as you can see, now the phone is secure and charging, but it's a bit of a hit or miss. So ideally what I think you're gonna do is try to find some spacers to put in these uh, couple of corners to simulate a slightly longer phone in, as in form factor in order to make sure that every time I put my phone here, as you can see, it's a bit of a hit or miss. It's, it's, it works. This is how it's supposed to be working. Yeah, right, yes, it goes. What do you think about this? I paid $39.99 for this mount, plus 10 for the vibration dampener, plus another 10 for the, um, for the ball mount adapter, from the RAM ball mount adapter. And uh, for $59.99, considering that the RAM alternative will be at, I think, $130 or something like that, it was worth trying and it's definitely worth trying to find uh, another solution as long as the phone is secure and doesn't fall off the bike. And considering that I have a convenient switch on the back and um, it's supposed to be waterproof, so I have to test it out on, on the street to confirm its functionality and fix this misalignment uh, of the wireless charging to make sure that everything works as intended. Do you have this problem? What do you suggest to use as a spacer over there? Uh, or uh, what do you think about this purchase anyway? Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this and if you think there are more suitable alternatives to this on the market. For the moment, thanks for watching.